We did a study on uh, people who are suicidal ideators, who think about suicide, and we compared their thoughts of certain concepts with the thoughts of just ordinary neurotypical people. And we found that the, some of these thoughts are altered in the suicidal ideators. For example, the concept of death is just neurally represented differently. Now we've developed machine learning techniques to capture the neural representation. We can tell how a thought is represented in the human brain. We can tell how the concept of a hammer is represented. But in this case, we looked at words and concepts that are more relevant to suicide. Words like death and funeral, but also words like carefree and trouble. And we saw that there, there were several concepts that are reliably different in the people who are suicidal ideators. And they're so reliably different that a machine learning algorithm, a classifier, can tell whether a new person is a suicidal ideator or a control participant by the way they represent these concepts. And it, it's very accurate. Uh, it had uh, over 90% accuracy in identifying the group membership of these people. It means that for the first time we can really peer into the brains of people who have a psychiatric problem. Not just, not just what they say to their therapist, which is certainly extremely informative, but in addition we can see their inner thoughts. We can measure their inner thoughts. That's what I think is the most significant thing. Also, you can imagine that in the future this research could move towards uh, being another assessment tool, being a um, more accessible assessment tool, perhaps based on EEG, and possibly with future research we can see whether we can possibly predict suicidality using this approach. So it's a whole new avenue. Psychiatry really bases a lot of its diagnosis on behavioral measures, on uh, on conversation, on, ass on assessments. And here we have a completely new way of assessing thought. It's in some ways revolutionary. The study shows that an algorithm can separate the two groups based on the differences in their brain representations. But we went further than that. We could tell what was different about those representations. It's not just an arbitrary statistical difference. We've shown that the emotional content of the neural representation is different in the people who are suicidal ideators. For example, the concept of death in includes more sadness in the people who are suicidal ideators than the controls. So it's not just a difference, it's an interpretable, understandable difference, which provides a target for therapy. You could imagine a therapy designed to ameliorate or possibly eliminate the difference in the emotional content of these concept representations. So I think that's a, another, another step forward, not just peering into their brains, but seeing precisely what the difference is and being able to interpret what that difference is. It will be useful to test this model that we've developed on a larger sample, on people with other psychiatric disorders besides suicidality, to see how specific our um, algorithm is. Right now our algorithm is specific enough to separate people who have attempted suicide from those who've only thought about it. So there, it, it, it's good in that respect, but I'm, I'm not, it's yet to be shown how well it discriminates people who have si suicidal ideation from people with other psychiatric disorders. And, uh, I, uh, and it would be very useful to find out whether it's possible to, possible to predict who's going to make an attempt at suicide. That would be extremely valuable. And also, it will be great if we could possibly port this technology to something more accessible and cheaper than uh, MRI. 
if this could be done with EEG scans, that would make it enormously easier, and there's research underway in our laboratory to see if that's possible. Brain imaging opened entirely new avenues for understanding brain function. The first 10 years were very interesting in finding out about the activation patterns, but I think an important step was taken when my colleague Tom Mitchell and I uh, many years ago developed a technique to uh, characterize and measure the representations of individual concepts and this has opened up many avenues this this clinical avenue that we've been discussing but also educational avenues we've, we've been able to learn how people learn new concepts such as scientific concepts and we can understand how they're organized in the brain so it's a, it's a very CMU kind of thing to use computational methods to understand things that are at the essence of humanity.